My first chemistry book is written for parents who do not know about chemistry and who have children who ask a lot of questions relating to chemistry. Why does grape juice turn to wine and wine to vinegar? What is the difference between gasoline and alcohol? Why is sugar sweet and salt salty? What is cotton, polyester, PET, and other interesting questions? It is not enough to say that everything is made of atoms and to leave it at that. This book puts faces on the atoms and gives them shapes to illustrate their characteristics. It shows how atoms, like people, bond together to make families of different materials that we encounter every day. This short story introduces the petroleum products, like gasoline, that make up the hydrocarbons. Then it shows how oxygen forms alcohols and acids and how alcohols and acids form esters that form polyesters. The book illustrates how fats are formed and how soaps are formed from fats. Proteins are discussed as well as salts. Finally, nuclear fusion is illustrated. All of these chemical concepts take place in the context of a story. The story takes place in chemistry land. It shows how men from a town take over a gas station and turn it into a bar. With time, the bar turns more and more violent. Then things turn sour. An entrepreneur decides to take advantage of the situation and sets up companies that make useful products. In the end, Chemistry Land is threatened by a terrorist. The story is told by a boy. Hi, my name is Hydrogen. I live in the land called Chemistry Land. In fact, all kids from all families who live in Chemistry Land are called Hydrogen. You can call all of us kids H for short. My mother's name is Carbon. All ladies in Chemistry Land are called Carbon, or C for short. My father's name is Oxygen. He's from the town of Oxygen. He's a policeman. All men from Oxygen are named Oxygen, or just O. They roam in pairs, so you can call them O-O when they approach. This is a map of chemistry land. I used to live in Hydrocarbon, a gas station selling petroleum products like gas, gasoline, and oil. It was like a shelter for single moms, and it was sometimes a very explosive atmosphere. We lived in a commune of women with children grouped in families. There was one lady, Methane, with four kids, and her neighbor was a family called Ethane, with two women and six kids. On the other side, lived the propane family with three moms and eight kids. The benzines across the street were a circle of six moms and six children forming a very aromatic family. Further down the road there was butane with four moms and eight kids. The pentane family with five moms and twelve kids. The hexanes with six moms and 14 kids. The heptanes with seven moms and 16 kids. And the octanes with eight moms. Mrs. Octane had 18 kids. There were many much bigger families. Many with as many as over 30 moms. With all the kids they could hold. But they didn't move at all. The more moms the family had, the thicker they became. The small families moved like they were in the air. The mid-sized families 
were sluggish like oils and grease, and the very large ones were solids like wax. One day, our gas station community was raided by the police and the fire department from the next town called Oxygen. The men arrived in teams of two. The men separated and so did the families. Kids were running in every direction. The policemen took the children to safety and the firemen took the ladies away. Then they drove back to Oxygen with their hostages. The policemen from Oxygen took such a liking to the children they rescued that most of them gave up their jobs and became single fathers to the kids they adopted. And one family with a single father was Mr. Water and his two kids. They were called the Water family and they were very happy and well liked because they got so well with everyone else. The firemen who took the ladies away were treated like dirt. They were called CO2. People accused them of being a danger to everyone. They were hot. One day, the Water family had a fight. One of the sons ran away, leaving the father abandoned and alone with his other son. Mr. Water started drinking and got friendly with Miss Methane and moved in with her. They changed their name to the Methanols. Mrs. Methane was a nag. The family was in danger of breaking apart. Mr. Water with his son eventually moved out and moved in with the Ethane family. They became known as the Ethanols. They had a reputation for drinking and partying too much. Other single dads with one kid saw what a great time the Ethanols were having. So three of them moved in with the Propanes and they became the Glycerol family. The gas station for machines turned into a drinking bar for people. The commune changed its name from hydrocarbon to alcohol. One day, a relative of Mr. Methanol arrived unexpectedly and moved in. It caused quite a stir. Two of the kids eventually moved out. To add acid to the wound, this relative was hanging on to Mrs. Methanol with a double grip. Naturally, the family, already sour, became very corrosive. They were called the formic acids and they were compared to the sting of biting ants. The same thing happened with the ethanols. When one of Mrs. Ethane's relatives turned up, they became so sour that people called them the vinegars. Instead of by their real name, the acetic acids. The benzenes broke their circle and paired up with five single dads and one hanger-on. People thought the family bloody sweet and called them the glucose family. But they didn't have a sweet ending. They moved into a wine community and the larger families broke up into the smaller families like the ethanols. But their happiness didn't last long. They were soon invaded by single men who only wanted to be hanger-ons with a double grip. It made the families very sour. So the once sweet and intoxicating ton of alcohol turned sour. It had more acid families than alcohol families and changed its name to acid. Some of the acid families had women who despite their sour character were very beautiful. Some of the alcohol families had women who were intoxicating with their sweetness but who were unfortunately lacking in beauty. Mr. Esther, an entrepreneur, hired beautiful ladies from acid families and sweet ladies from alcohol families and mixed them in attractive combinations of beauty and sweetness. He was able to match any alcohol family with any acid family and combine the strengths of the two. He made unique teams with unique strengths in his polyester company, making such things 
as bulletproof vests called mylar and rocket-proof armor called Kevlar. He connected the glycerol family with three families of hydrocarbons in his soap company. The glyceride was the manager and the three hydrocarbon families called fatty acids were the workers. This team was called the triglycerides. In the presence of a very sour and aggressive family called Lye, the triglyceride team broke up into their fatty acid chains. They broke up into charged ions. The Lye family consisted of Mrs. Sodium with a metallic disposition, Mr. Oxygen and their kid. Mr. Oxygen saw his chance at getting a boy, which he always wanted, and dumped his wife, which he also always wanted. He traded with the fatty acid, his stinging wife, for one of their boys. Mrs. Sodium Ion joined the fatty acid ion to form the soap family, while the boy joined Mr. Oxygen and his boy, and they formed a very happy water family. Because the soap family had a fatty tail with a metallic head, the tail dissolved easily in fat, while the head dissolved easily in water. The tail of the soap gathered the oil like a broom, and oil droplets formed in water that could be flushed away. One day, the circus, called Nitrogen, came to the area. Three children were abducted by Mr. Nitrogen from the circus. He formed a family called the Ammonia family. He and his kind moved in with some of the hydrocarbon families in what was once the gas station. He moved in with Mrs. Methane and formed the Methylamine family. He attracted the ladies so much that he was invited by the Ethane sisters to move in. So he did and started the ethylamine family. Then he got invited by the propanes and he stayed forming the propylamine family. All families were genetically related. They were all amino acids. Amino acids form neighborhoods called protein and some became very intelligent and formed vital components to the central computer system of chemistry land called DNA. Mr. Nitrogen was a very flexible man. He was able to make triple bonds with the ladies from hydrocarbon forming the cyanide family. The bonds were so tight that when they exploded, they were very toxic. With the men from oxygen, Mr. Nitrogen formed families so funny that it made people laugh. So they were known as the laughing gas family. One day, one of the Mr. Nitrogens was out with his partner when they were caught in a cosmic ray shower. They were first separated, but if that wasn't bad enough, Mr. Nitrogen was hit just in the right place to make him roll up for a little while, feeling like one of the ladies. Like Cinderella, when her time was up and she came to her senses, Mr. Nitrogen for a while known just as carbon-14, eventually found himself again. Mr. Nitrogen was then able to calculate how long he was a carbon-14. When somebody asked how did he do that, Mr. Nitrogen replied, Soon after I was zapped, I integrated with other carbon-14s into living material. Then carbon-14 started to decay back to nitrogen at the known rate called the half-life of carbon-14. Carbon-14's half-life is 5,730 years, which for this presentation is now. After another 5,730 years, the remaining half of carbon-14s decayed back to nitrogen. After 
11,460 years, two lifetimes, three quarters of the carbon-14s have decayed back into nitrogen. After three lifetimes, another half of the remaining carbon-14s decayed back into nitrogen. After four lifetimes, you can calculate how many carbon-14s have decayed back into nitrogen. Finally, when our unfortunate Mr. Nitrogen woke up from his ordeal, he only had to count the number of carbon-14s of the material he was trapped in to calculate how long ago he was zapped. One day, we had a very exciting situation. A lone kid hooked on flowers, many regarded as an acid freak and a danger to the community, met the most aggressive family around, the Lie family, with Mrs. Metal and her partner, a single dad with his boy. When the Lie family saw the acid kid hooked on flowers, Mrs. Sodium suddenly left her family, being very positively charged. This left her man, stuck with their kid, very negatively charged. She knocked Mrs. Sodium knocked the kid off the flower, sending him to her husband, and stayed with the flower herself. Her husband, happy to be rid of her, adopted the kid as his own and formed a happy family called Water. The nag, happy with her flowers, was neutralized and was called by everyone a salt. My greatest moment in my life came when chemistry land was invaded by terrorists called uranium. They threatened to destroy our entire area unless their demands were met, their demands to be leader of chemistry land. The leader had a bunch of suicide bombers ready to blow themselves up for his cause. He showed us that when they are hit by a slow neutron, they blow up, causing a great explosion. He demonstrated how a chain reaction could be set up by recruiting and lining up suicide bombers to detonate an entire room of them. The suicide bombers lined up and one by one started to blow themselves up. I was able to dislodge the last suicide bomber before the entire building blew up. Then me and my brothers went into the room, broke in, and arrested all of the terrorist suicide bombers. From that point on, Everyone liked me and considered me a superhero with powers like a blazing sun.